The story of a sea turtle. Be brave. A heartwarming friendship story between a lost sea turtle and the animals he meets along the way. Written by Kumiko Inoue. Picture by Hikari Araki. Prologue. Run towards the ocean. Crash, swash, curse, splash. Crash, swash, curse, splash. The big wide ocean lies in front, far as the eye can see. Crash, swash, curse, splash. Crash, swash, curse, splash. If you view the ocean from the top of Goat Mountain, it seems as if you are standing right in the middle of the ocean. Crash, swash, curse, splash. Crash, swash, curse, splash. When Miss Goat comes here, she feels as if she is being held by someone who's invisible but big. Even when worried about the children before long, her heart turns warm. The sun went down and the half moon began to shine. Just as she started back down the path in the calm evening led by the moonlight, she heard a sound. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Small creatures were digging themselves out of the beach, moving their flippers as fast as they could. They all scurried towards the ocean. All of a sudden, Miss Goat was taken aback by the scene. Something clicked in her mind. Unintentionally grasping a walnut pendant at her neck firmly, she nodded many times. It's not too late yet, yet. Chapter 1 Animal School On the other side of Goat Mountain from the ocean, there is a small school on the back of a river. It is the animal school, a school for animal children. Miss Goat is the teacher. There are four students, John the seagull, Rabbi the rabbit, Mogul the mole, and Tuppy the turtle, who just joined this summer. The school is only in the morning. Everybody has lunch on his own because the times when they eat and the food they have are different. After school, Tuppy always basks in the sun by the river bank. Her shell feels good in the warm sun. Tuppy is a sea turtle, generally a baby sea turtle hatched from the egg heads immediately towards the ocean. However, here Tuppy is far away from the ocean. Before long, Tuppy has a dream. In the dream, she is swimming freely in the wide ocean with other turtles. Every time Tuppy tries to talk to the other turtles, though she wakes up. Oh, it's just same dream I've had before. I wonder if there are turtles in the ocean. Chapter 2 A Strategy Meeting Meanwhile, Miss Goat and the children are in the middle of a strategy meeting. 
Miss Gold has something important to discuss with the children today. Tappy is a baby sea turtle, so she needs to go back to the ocean as soon as possible. The children are all confused because of the sudden news. Miss Goat clears her throat. It was a morning after a terrible thunderstorm that I found lifeless Tappy on the riverbank near school. She must have gotten lost because of the thunder. I told myself, I'll take care of her till she recovers. Now, the teacher has something bothering her, the sign of creeping autumn. It's hot during the daytime, but cool in the morning and evenings. Sea turtles are creatures that live in warm places. They can't bear the cold winter. So, Tappy has to get back to the ocean by the end of fall. That being so, she needs to go now, said Miss Goat. The children throw their thoughts out. If she digs a hole and gets inside like I do, she'll be warm and cozy. If she has feathers like I do, she wouldn't be cold. If she hops around, she should stay warm. I know how you feel. You don't want your new friend to leave but God has prepared the most suitable place for everyone to live, explained Miss Goat. Can't you just stay in the place you like? asked John. Well, yes. Tappy seems to like it here, but I think there is a more suitable place for a sea tutors to live, said Miss Goat. It's better if winter never comes for a sea turtle, right? said Mogul. Oh, I wish there was some wonderful way that would make her want to go to the ocean, said Rabbi. Yes, I have a good idea, but I need you all to cooperate, said Miss Goat, crapping her hoofs. Chapter 3 Sermon Run It was when Tappy was thinking of going back that she saw a large school of fish swimming upstream. They were salmon. The salmon saw the little sea turtle too, thinking it strange for her to be so far away from the ocean. They decided to talk to her. We are Sam and Sea Salmon. We are on our way back from the ocean. What are you doing here? Tappy didn't know what to say. Then Sam and Sea started talking. Born upstream of this river, we swam down the river and went out to the ocean. We swam freely in the wide ocean with our friends. We met many, many creatures and had adventures in the tide. Now that we are grown up, we came back to our home river. We won't be going back to the ocean anymore. Hearing their talk, Tappy wanted to know more about the ocean. You seem to not to know anything, even though you are a sea turtle. The ocean is big and wide, it's rich and wonderful, said Sea. Since the ocean is so wonderful, you should have stayed. Why did you come back to the river? asked Tappy. Sam answered, 
We came back to our home river to meet females and get married. That is God's will for us. That's why we are heading upstream where the water is clear. Next, it's our small children's turn to go to the ocean and have their adventure. As she listened to their story, Tapi's heart beat fast. By the way, we saw a lot of baby turtles like you when we entered the mouth of the river. They were swimming towards the ocean with all their might. On top of that, we also met a lot of grown up turtles when we were swimming in the wide ocean. We remember them swimming leisurely. Whatever happened, why don't you go to the ocean again? Saying that, the salmon swam upstream. While seeing them off, Tapi pondered. I remember swimming desperately in a thunderstorm the night I hatched. But I didn't get to the ocean. I am a weak, cowardly turtle. I don't know why I'm here. Here. However, while listening to the salmon story, Tapi realized that desire to see the ocean had sprouted in her heart. But when I think of Miss Gold who helped me and the friends I made, I don't know what to do. Chapter 4 Miss Gold's Contact Network Tuppy vaguely started at the sky for a while. The sky was clear and blue. John was flying leisurely. He called down to Tuppy. Hey Tuppy, you can't see anything from there, can you? If there is anything you'd like to see in the ocean, I can look at it for you. There he goes with his cocky attitude, thought Tappy. The ocean is very beautiful. Tappy, I'm sure you'd want to go if you saw it too. They say there are many, many kinds of creatures in the ocean. Tappy plucked up her courage and asked, Are there turtles in the ocean? Her voice was so small that John couldn't hear. What, seagulls? asked John. So Tuppy asked louder, Are there turtles? John answered straight away, I've seen big ones and small ones. If you are interested, why don't you go see for yourself? And he flew away. Tuppy's desire to see those other turtles rose. All of a sudden, Rabbi jumped out from under cover. He had a message from Miss Gold, who had said, Tomorrow is the full moon. Let's view the moon from the top of Goat Mountain on this year's school trip. Everyone has their own pace, so you should each decide your own departure time. Also take whatever you need, that's all. What on earth, going on a school trip tomorrow, it's such, such short notice. It's just like Miss Goat to say that the things to take and the time to leave depend on each person, said Molo, who appeared suddenly. Everything depends on each person. What does that mean? asked Rabbi. That because she's a goat, bleed bleed means each individual. By the way, I've never been to Goat Mountain, said Tuppy timidly. 
Same with all of us. Let's go because it's a school trip. John, you can fly ahead and wait for us there. Mogo, what are you going to do? I'll dig a tunnel and join you there. But the mountain road might be a little steep for Tappy. Tappy, you can quit now if you want. Mogo, it's not nice of you to talk like that. Well, wouldn't it be awkward to turn back in the middle? See you, said Mogo, and he went away. Don't worry, we can go slowly together. Bye, said Rabbi, and away he hopped. Tuppy was left alone. She felt very anxious and lonely. On the other hand, the possibility of seeing the ocean from Goat Mountain raised her hopes. Chapter 5 First School Trip Early the next morning, Tappy started to walk alone because Rabbi had said, You can start first and I'll catch up right away. She started walking, but she was tempted to turn back many times. The path up Goat Mountain was a gentle slope. However, it was very challenging for Tappy, the small turtle. She would take a break, pull herself together, and walk on. When she looked back, the river where she met a salmon was flickering. The school looked so small. It was a slow pace, but she had come quite a ways. Still, Rabbi hadn't come. Tuppy was so lonesome, she muttered unintentionally. Should I turn around? No one is watching. Yes, don't overdo it. She heard a small whisper from the grass. She looked around and said to herself, Well, I don't need to push myself. John, who was watching everything from a tree, said, Weren't you going to see for yourself? Saying that, he flew away. Tuppy decided to go a little further after all. A little later, a gentle breeze began blowing from the slope again. The summit must be close. A nostalgic scent of tide was mixed with the slightly moist breeze. Hey, I am so sorry, I overslept, said Rabbi, who finally joined in. They decided to hurry a little, because the goal seemed near. As Tappy walked along, she could hear the swash, swash sound of waves. Chapter 6 Arriving at the Top of Goat Mountain The magnificent blue ocean stretched out in front of Tappy's eyes. Swash, crash, swash, crash. The sound of the waves was so pleasant to the ear. Is this the ocean I dreamed of? Tappy asked herself. It is overwhelmingly big and beautiful. Words fail it. Suddenly, the children were talking. Hooray! We made it! We're on the top of the mountain! Miss Goat said smilingly. Tappy, you did so well. And thank you, everyone. But there's more to come. What does that mean? Miss Goat pays no attention to the children's questions. Well, let's each view the moon. Each again. That's Miss Goat for you, muttered Mogul. After a short time, 
the other side of the horizon started getting brighter. The big moon rose gradually. That night there was a full moon. Illuminated by the moonlight, the swaying sea looked so mysterious that everyone was fascinated. Right at that moment, small creatures were clawing out from under the sand all over the dimly lit beach, one after another. Yes, it was the baby sea turtles. Every baby turtle moved his small limbs hard and ran toward the ocean. Tuppy stared at Miss Goat speechless. Chapter 7 The Event on the Night of the Thunderstorm It was the long awaited time. Miss Goat began to talk quietly. Do you remember? Teacher, I, I, was all Tuppy could say. It was the morning after a thunderstorm when I found you lying on the bank of the river by the school. I couldn't understand how a baby sea turtle could swim there. Maybe because of the strong lightning, your sense of direction was so numb that you, having just hatched from your egg, went the opposite direction. Even so, you swam desperately. I went in the wrong direction. You might have made a little mistake, but you survived. That's a wonderful thing. Now, those baby turtles who were just born and desperately heading toward the ocean because they want to survive. John added his two bits in spite of himself. That's right. The sea turtle lays a lot of eggs every year, but only a few babies that hatch from them get to the ocean and become adults. Wow, is that true? Tuppy, you're amazing, said Rabbi. You came all the way here to the top of Goat Mountain on your own feet without giving up. You're really strong and fearless said Mogul. You have real courage because you survived even when you got lost. Remember, you are not a coward, said Miss Goat. Chapter 8. Be Courageous Listening to everyone talk, Tuppy felt a lamb in her throat. She decided to take courage and tell everyone her real feelings. I'm sorry I kept my mouth shut. I was ashamed of my cowardly self who couldn't get to the ocean. Even so, you all helped me. Thank you very much. Miss Goat fixed her eyes on Tuppy again. Well, what are you going to do now? Will you go back to the school after viewing the moon? Or you can still make it, can't you? Tuppy thought for a while, then answered clearly. Yes, I'll go to that ocean. I might not be a good swimmer, but I'm going. I'll swim all my might. Then when I grow up, you come back like the sermon, right? Yes, I'll be sure to come back. We can't see what it's like in the ocean, so tell us all about the ocean when you come back, said the children unanimously. God has given us all life. Your long journey begins now, Tuppy. God will show you which road to take. Tuppy, be brave. Have a wonderful trip. Yes. With Miss Goat's words pondering in her heart, Tuppy started toward the ocean. She would stop now and then and wave at everyone. 
Thank you, everyone. See you again. Yup, see you, Tapi. Take care. Epilogue A New Beginning Crash, swash, curse, blush. Crash, swash, curse, blush. The sound of the waves echoed in everyone's heart. Crash, swash, curse, blush. Crash, swash, curse, blush. As Miss Goat watched Tappy walk towards the ocean, she grasped the walnut pendant in her hers. Tappy will be fine. She'll survive, grow strong, and come back to this beach. We'll look forward to seeing her again. Crash, swash, curse, blush. Crash, swash, curse, blush. The big moon shed gentle light on Tappy's back. The end.